If you want someone to move faster, what are you going to say? There's many things you can say, but we don't want to be too direct. This video lesson is going to increase your vocabulary to tell people to hurry up. Hi there, it's Ken. Welcome back to the Get English Tips channel. And if you're new here, welcome. If hopefully you'll like it enough to start subscribing and get all the latest English lessons that's going to help you to improve your English skills. Today's lesson is 25 ways that you can tell someone to hurry up. When you're ready, let's go. So there's a few different ways that we can tell someone to hurry up. Now remember, in English, certainly in British English, it's always a good idea to speak indirectly. We're very, very polite when we're speaking our British English people like myself. So there's lots of vocabulary that we can use. So let's have a look at different ways that we can say, hurry up, get a move on. This, this can sound really, it's like we're pushing someone and we're usually using it very seriously. Someone's being slow and we're, we, have, we have a deadline. Get a move on. Come on, step on it. This is like stepping on the gas pedal in a car or the accelerator pedal in a car to get someone moving quickly. So come on, step on it. Maybe someone's doing a task already and we can tell them, come on, step on it. We have to be there soon. Chop, chop. This is generally used with, with children and kids. It's a fun way to tell someone to, to hurry up. Come on, chop, chop, shake a leg. I don't actually know where this comes from, but maybe someone is being lazy, they're sleeping. We tell them, come on, get up. Come on, shake a leg. We have to move. Maybe shake a leg is to move your legs quickly, maybe. But shake a leg, very informal way to, to say hurry up. Get your ass in gear. Now, this is this could be quite rude to some people, but um, we're really telling someone that they should be hurrying and they are not. So we're putting a little bit of pressure on them. It's quite a serious one to use. So we tell them to hurry up. We tell them to come on, get your ass in gear. Very strong one to use. Get your skates on. You know, like roller skates or ice skates to make you go faster. Get your skates on. Then maybe we are late for an appointment. So we're telling someone to hurry up, get your skates on. We have to be there very, very quickly. Stop your dawdling, dawdling. This is the verb to dawdle. Dawdle means to move slowly with not any purpose to, you know, to act lazy. So stop your dawdling. Maybe a parent would say this to a child. It's very, very informal. Stop your dawdling, come on, we have to move. Come on, make it snappy. Maybe we're expecting something um, for someone to give us we've, something. We've told someone, can you do this for me? I need it urgently. So we can say to them, can you make it snappy? I need it very, very quickly. This can be quite rude. So we have to be careful how we're using it. Come on, make it snappy. Never use it in a restaurant. If the waitress is slow, if you say that, it's very, very rude. But generally we have to know the person that we are saying it to. Come on, make it snappy. Shift yourself, shift yourself. Shift means to move from one place to another. So shift yourself. We're telling someone who's maybe sitting down, come on, we have to be very, very quick here. And uh, we can say to them, come on, shift yourself. We have to go somewhere now, shift yourself. Look lively. This is maybe where, um, you know, a lot of people are being lazy, they're sitting down watching television, and then maybe the boss comes or someone important comes. We are telling people to move quickly and get to work or look as if you are busy. Come on, look lively. Other vocabulary we've got, we've got scoot. Scoot means to move from one place to another very, very quickly, to scoot. Like a, a scooter, like a moped, a scooter. So scoot, come on, scoot, move quickly to make tracks. Normally this is when we are leaving maybe a, a party or we're leaving someone, we have to go somewhere else. So we say to them, we have to leave quickly, we have to make tracks. 
I think it is make tracks in the road actually. So we have to make tracks. Stop messing around. Maybe something needs to be done urgently and they're not doing it. They're wasting time. We can tell them, come on, stop messing around. Hurry up, stop messing around quickly. There's no time to lose. This sounds really, really, really urgent. Um, we have to go somewhere or we have to do something. If we say there's no time to lose, we have to do it immediately. So we're telling people we, we have to be very, very quick. Do it immediately. There's no time to lose. It's urgent. Other indirect ways we can say to hurry up, we can say, I'm pressed for time. I'm pressed for time. This is telling someone indirectly that you're in a hurry and you're letting them know that something has to be done quickly. I'm pressed for time. I'm in a hurry. Now, hurry can be a verb or a noun, and here we use it as a noun. I'm in a hurry. It's very, very common, this one to use, yeah? I'm in a hurry. I need it done immediately. Another similar one to I'm in a hurry is I'm in a rush. I'm in a rush. Again, rush is like a verb and a noun, and here we use it as a noun. So I'm in a rush. I'm in a rush. I'm sorry, I can't do it. I'm in a rush. Hurry up. I'm running out of time. You have a deadline approaching. You're coming up to the deadline. You're saying, hurry, quick, quick, quick. I'm running out of time. Time is running out. We're nearly at the deadline. I'm running out of time. The clock's ticking, come on. We're putting pressure on someone to finish a task or to finish something we've asked them to do. The clock's ticking. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. So the clock's ticking. Let's get going. This is giving words of encouragement to someone. We're telling them, we're telling them in a, in a, in a nice and encouraging way that we are in a hurry. We need to get going. Let's get going. Saying that to someone is very, very natural in English. Let's get going. We have to be very quick. We're in a hurry. If you're in business, obviously you have to be a little bit more formal and more indirect when we're speaking. We can tell someone we're a bit behind schedule. We're a bit behind schedule. We need this done. So we're encouraging someone to be quicker. We're a bit behind schedule. If you're the boss, or you have a you have a, a worker or an associate that needs that, that needs telling we need something done we give them a deadline and we say we need it no later than 2 p.m so we're giving them a deadline it's very formal and it's very very indirect to tell them we're in a hurry and we need it no later than blah blah we can also ask someone a question and say what seems to be the hold up we're telling them we're in a hurry, where we need something quickly, they're not doing it. So we, we're speaking very formally and indirect. We can ask them a question. What seems to be the hold up? Another question we, that we can ask is, do you need any help with that? We're telling them that the task is needs to be done quickly and we're giving them a nice option. We're saying, do you need help with that? We need it quickly. So this is another way to say that we're in a hurry. Is that the time? We need to get a move on. This is like an exclamation, a kind of shock and surprise that the deadline is approaching. Is that the time we need to get a move on? We're emphasizing that we're running out of time, that things need to move along very, very quickly. Is that the time we need to get a move on? So there's 25 ways, different ways that we can say to someone, Let's move, we're in a hurry. There are informal ways, some good vocabulary, some indirect ways also. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you've learned something new. If you have different ways of saying we're in a hurry, then leave them below and let everyone else know and I'll check them for you. And if you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe and to turn on the notifications and you'll get all the latest English lessons that's gonna help you improve your English skills. So my name's Ken, bye for now. Please feel free to check any of these videos and remember you can subscribe about here, I think it is. So choose your video, which one, up to you. But more importantly, remember 
to subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.